I always give advice. The two best things that you can do for your career is networking and public speaking. And the reason I say that is because we all know it's so much easier to find resources, to find a job, find, you know, someone that you can rely on to brainstorm with when you know somebody. So never be afraid to go out there and start conversations, uh, ask questions. They're either going to say yes or no. And I think you might be surprised that most of the time it will be yes. So when you think about threat intel, it's really, really hard for one organization to know everything. So when you work with your industry peers, whether it's industry specific or just all companies in general, when you share information, the bad guys are certainly sharing information with each other. So it's important for us to share and to really collaborate with each other. And that will make our security posture much better if we're really pulling in threat intel from all over Um, the globe, as well as other organizations. ISSA, you know, is one of the larger security organizations and it's a global organization. So no matter where you're located, there are more likely will be a chapter within your area. So definitely look at that and you can go to ISSA.org. Um, or you can do Google searches just really specifically around the area you live. But one of the things that ISSA does is they bring everyone together. Um, our Central Ohio chapter actually meets monthly, and we have a big InfoSec conference generally in the spring. And we really focus on threats and what currently things companies are facing. So it's a really good way to just expand your knowledge, network, and meet other people. Um, and you always can kind of come away with a little bit of a nugget or more more nuggets, uh, depending on what you're looking for and the topics that we discuss on a monthly basis. Every ISSA chapter is a little bit differently, but I will speak for the Central Ohio ISSA um, chapter. What we do is we tend to offer, you know, anywhere from two to four trainings a year, and we give a significant discount to our members. Uh, We also allow all of our members to come to our monthly meetings for free. So that's another add-on as a benefit. And then we have a variety of events uh, that ISSA members uh, many times can get in a little less expensive than others. And we're always looking um, on ways to really help our membership get more involved and make those personal connections and professional connections. So I think when you look at broadly all the different organizations, they all kind of represent different domains within the cybersecurity space. And I would say never feel that you're not welcome. I really do feel one of the things that we're very fortunate in Central Ohio is that everyone is pretty welcoming because we all started somewhere. And if you think about cybersecurity, it's not that old of a profession when you think about all the other professions that are out there. And so it really is about bringing people together and collaborating. And we bring in students all the way up to chief information security officers in a variety of our events. So never feel that you're not welcomed. Um, We we encourage you to attend. And maybe if you're just thinking about cybersecurity, attending a couple of these events throughout the year may change your mind. And obviously our goal is to hopefully interest you in the the cybersecurity space um, because really the jobs are endless at this point and there's so much opportunity and everyone comes from different backgrounds and different skill sets. You know, diversity, equity, inclusion is obviously in the last couple of years has been a huge topic. And I mean, for me, it's been something super important my entire career. And really, when you think about from a research perspective, you know, a lot of researchers will say that more diverse teams make better teams. And the reason I truly believe that is because when you have different perspectives and different viewpoints, as long as you can have conversations that are respectful, it's amazing the outcomes that can happen. And so it's really important for us to think differently. Um, If we're going to the same individuals or a pot of people every time, it may be a little more challenging to find more diverse candidates. So there's a lot of organizations and associations that focus on those areas. And I would encourage you uh, to look into some of those, attend some of those events, 
um, it may open up some of the opportunities to have uh, more diverse candidates apply for positions. A couple things that I think about. One is that I think we have a marketing problem. A lot of our job descriptions require what I would call for a unicorn, that someone that has all these different skills. And it's really hard to find those people. And statistically, women um, and minorities tend to only apply for jobs. They have 80% of the requirements where men, it's between 25 and 35, depending on what you read. Um, and so there's a really big disparity of that. So if we start to think about, can we change our job descriptions to say, these are the must requirements, and then these would be like something we would like for you to have, but it's not a requirement, that could open up opportunities. And I also just think that when we do a lot of marketing for cybersecurity, I feel like it's always the pen, pen testing. Um, it's the person in the hoodie and a keyboard. And, you know, not not necessarily all women or, you know, different groups are maybe necessary ready to go to become a pen tester. I'm not saying that they can't be technical because they certainly can be, but I think we also, again, have to really open up our opportunity to, to go to different places to find talent. I would say in the last couple of years, there's been so many security groups that represent different um, groups of folks. Folks, So for example, um, there are for people of color, women and other minorities. And a lot of those organizations also are really trying to offer up scholarships and free resources for people that are interested in going into the cybersecurity space. And so those are the types of organizations that you may want to align with, because if they're attracting those diverse groups of folks, then those are people that you could potentially look um, as hires to your organization to build out a more diverse team. So when you're thinking about nonprofits, so for example, um, I'm a founding member of Empower, and our goal was to represent women in the Midwest. And we have really two goals. One, um, allow others to come in and all feel welcomed uh, to our to our different events that we have. But we also started a scholarship fund um, right before COVID. And so far we've awarded around 50,000 and we're actually just opening up our next set of scholarships. And so there's like WISIS, um, there's Black Ticks, Black Tech 614, um, and there's so many other organizations also throughout the U.S. that are really trying to focus on bringing people into our industry and really allowing them from either a training or some type, you know, that soft skills, the technical skills, putting together programs. Um, at, some of them are at no cost or low cost or there's scholarships, obviously, that can help pay for these things. So it's really about opening doors um, across the industry and really representing more of the diversity that we can bring to the table. I think public speaking and networking are the two biggest things that you can do for your career. And so when, when we talk about pushing people, I always try to push people a little bit out of their comfort zone. Um, because one of the things that I think is super important is being self-aware. If you're not self-aware you and you don't know what you do well in the areas that you need to improve, it's really tough. So sometimes like public speaking can actually help you prepare to speak in front of a board or in front of executive leadership or even just to your group. And it really starts to allow you to have more confidence in your public speaking ability. And a lot of people don't equivalent like speaking in front of a board or the C-suite is the same as speaking in a conference. Anytime you have an audience, it's really public speaking. It could be small or it could be big. Um, but I, again, I always tell people to think differently. Um, and, you know, when for me, it's really important. And when I do mentor people, the one thing I always ask from them, and this is really it, is when they have an opportunity to pay forward to do so. And if you think about if I start and then Reg is the next person, then 20 other people, think about how many people we can reach. Um, Because sometimes people need a little bit of help seeing their potential because um, we don't always have it in ourselves to see our, our whole potential. But someone on the outside that sees all these wonderful qualities about yourself, 
sometimes just letting people know, like, you're going to kill this, giving that positive reinforcement, I think is really important. And honestly, um, I think if you open yourself to those, I really feel like the sky's the limit um, and really what you want to do with your career and how you succeed through the years that we do work.